Well, we had healthy gains across most of the indices here today. In fact, we do have bullish postures on three out of the four major US equity indices. We saw a nice little bounce out of technology here today. After hours, Adobe did report. Adobe has been one of the big growth stocks of this market in the last couple of years, so that stock seems to be hanging in there okay at this point. But for today's trade application, I actually want to focus on an area of the market that didn't do quite as well here today and focus on a bearish trading opportunity. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Zee. It's September 13th, 2018. For those of you that are new, first of all, welcome aboard. We're grateful to have you in our audience here tonight. Remember, you can go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. And while you're there, look in our description area, which will allow you to sign up for our email distribution list. So that way you can be alerted whenever we post these videos and also gives you a heads up on which stocks are giving you overbought and oversold cluster signals within the S&P 500. In addition to YouTube, we're heavy users of Twitter. Make sure you're following me there. My handle is at Brandon Van Z, all one word and make sure you're clicking like and retweet if you appreciate uh, these videos when you see those uh, particular tweets out there. In addition to that, we're also on Facebook, so make sure you check out our group embedded in the web address in the logo in front of you there uh, and join all the excellent conversations over in our Facebook group. All right, with that, let's go ahead and dive into the analysis of the markets here tonight. And as you can see, I've got my four grid pulled up here. And this is chart 4B for those of you that are following along at home and our premium market scholar subscribers that have downloaded all of our charts. Uh, this particular chart setup is going to show us the four major indices. It's going to give us an idea from a three month perspective what the trends are. Um, and it's also going to give us some nice color coding. Remember when we have the green background color uh, like I'm pointing at here on the S&P 500, uh, it tells us that we have a bullish posture using the intermediate term line. Now you'll notice that for a couple of days here, we actually had a slightly bearish posture, but when I was with you on Tuesday, which would have been on this candle right here, I mentioned I wouldn't read too much into that bearish posture at that point, simply because we had a nice bullish engulfing candle and we had a nice bounce off of that rising moving average. So if you're still looking at trend and price, uh, then things were still in reasonably good shape. And at this point, uh, I have no uh, reason to believe that that's not the case, it, you know, basically meaning that we've had a nice bounce at an area that we expected it to bounce. And so that's a, a strong sign for those of you that want to be bullish. And so it is good to see us back in that bullish category as we find that green line twisting back higher uh, yet again. We also have a bullish posture on the Dow Jones, which hit a three month high here today. Uh, we also have a bullish posture as of today on the NASDAQ composite. I mentioned in the intro that the NASDAQ, uh, which is led oftentimes by technology stocks, had a really robust bounce here today. So uh, not only was the NASDAQ up 0.75% today, but a lot of those high tech stocks uh, did very, very well today. You'll notice the Russell 2000 was the laggard here today. It was down 0.08% and it remains the only holdout from the indices perspective that continues to have that bearish posture. But again, uh, just be careful uh, not going too aggressively bearish uh, there just simply because price continues to be above a rising moving average and it is entirely possible that we get some sort of a bounce out of this uh, area here. But, you know, admittedly, the other indices do look stronger. The, the bounces out of some of those uh, areas on the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones all look uh, quite strong. All of our uh, moving average tips continue to be green, which reminds us that price is above a moving average in all four of our cases uh, right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next chart setup. In this case, we'll go over to chart 4C. And again, S&P 500 up today, it was up about 0.53%. So let's see if that then can uh, lead us to the determination of whether we have any three green arrows or not on these charts. So remember three green arrows is just three different technical indicators that we look at to see if we have a good trend trading environment or not. Uh, the first green arrow that we're looking for is the green arrow on the moving average itself. And this is a 30 day moving average that we're applying on this particular chart. This is chart 4C. And you can see that the most recent arrow on the moving average for the S&P 500 was a green one. And that was way back the first week of July. Uh, so basically what that means is we have not closed below a rising moving average in that entire time. 
Unfortunately, we're not quite to the point of getting three green arrows yet because we still have this red arrow in place on the MACD. But notice that those bars have turned from red to gray to identify that we're now rounding the corner and heading back higher. So as long as there's not some huge drop in the market in the next couple of days, there's a very good chance that we will get a green arrow here on the MACD as well. And then today we did receive a phantom green arrow. Uh, so that's when the stochastics comes down, but doesn't go all the way to the lower reversal zone and then kind of does an about face and heads higher again. That's known as a phantom green arrow. So we have two green arrows, one red arrow on the S&P 500. And uh, that's actually how we stand with uh, the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ as well, uh, whereas we do have the uh, stochastic still giving us a red arrow on the Russell 2000. Let's now take a look at our longer term view. This is our 1040 crossover method here, this chart 4D. And remember, this chart's a little bit different because these charts are three years in length as opposed to three months. And every one of the candles on this chart is one week in length rather than one day. And so what we're mostly looking for here are um, legitimate changes in trend. And how we identify this with this 1040 crossover method is just simply looking at the moving averages themselves and asking ourselves if they are crossing over. And so you can see right here that the orange line represents the 10 week moving average. The blue line represents the 40 week moving average. And we've been smooth sailing for quite some time. We had maybe just a little bit of a hiccup, you know, as we pulled back here uh, in the summer months. But even there, it wasn't like uh, we were anticipating that within a week or so we would get a crossover. We still had plenty of separation between the orange and the blue line. And right now that's expanding even further. Remember, that's the point of us having these MACD2 lines on the chart as well. The direction of that um, indicator will tell us whether those moving averages themselves are separating. So in the case of the Dow Jones, where you see that black line right there that I'm kind of pointing at going up, it's telling us that the orange line is going up at a faster rate than the blue line, which is what you want because the orange line is going to be your more sensitive uh, moving average since it tracks a fewer amount of days. So it gives us a sense that there is strength in the current marketplace. And you can see that black line is going up here on the S&P 500 and on the NASDAQ as well, although it's a little bit more flattish there on the NASDAQ. It's also flat on the Russell 2000. So from that perspective, we're getting better separation on the Dow Jones and on the S&P 500 right now. But in all of the cases, we've been bullish on this posture for over two years. So had you gotten into the market a couple of years ago and just held on for dear life, you probably had a very good experience uh, in the market here uh, with some exceptional gains along the way. All right, let's now take a peek at some of our 12 grid analysis. Let's take a peek at our intermarket analysis first. And this is chart 4E for those of you that are following along at home. Remember, you can uh, go to the Market Scholars website if you're a premium Market Scholar and go to my chart importation tutorial uh, if you want some assistance in setting up your chart. I have a video that will go with the uh, shared links that you'll receive uh, as well. Uh, speaking of which, I should also uh, let you know that uh, we had an excellent um, class here today. We had an excellent uh, question and answer class. That's what I teach usually on Tuesdays, I'm sorry, Thursdays at, at noon Eastern time. And so you can see the variety of class questions that we received today. So for those of you that are premium scholars, uh, if any of these strike your interest, uh, that recording is posted. And so you can hear my answers to these various questions. So we had a question on Kroger here today, a question on the debt over at AT&T, a question on how to hedge a portfolio, a question on Franklin Resource. Actually, this is on Philip Morris. A uh, question on uh, Micron, question on Dow DuPont question on uh, Grand uh, Canyon education, uh, question on uh, sold puts, uh, question on MED, which has been really hot stock. Wow, uh, that stock is up 340% in the last year. Uh, another question on Philip Morris, question on CVS, uh, question on Amgen, um, a discussion about how dividend growth investing works in high inflationary uh, environments like the early 1980s, a uh, discussion about some stocks I've been looking at here recently, uh, a conversation about uh, Coca-Cola as a dividend investment, and then taking a peek at some analysis on Dover. So if any of those questions strike your fancy, check out the recording. All right, back on track here with our uh, 12 grid. What I'm typically looking for here are trends or reversals of trends. 
And one of the things I mentioned two days ago that kind of stands out right now as I look at this is on the on the treasury yields. We were talking about how we had a really nice rising yield day there on Tuesday. Yesterday was a little bit of a give back day and today was basically flat. That's why you got a gray uh, looking candle right there. It was exactly flat on the day. But the thing I mentioned on Tuesday was don't get overly excited about the fact that yields are spurting higher here over the last couple of weeks because where it puts us in line is right back to where we have this potential double top from basically three months ago right here in June and then again here at the beginning of August. And so that doesn't necessarily give you a whole lot of comfortable feelings here as we've been really stalling out at that same level once again. So perhaps if this does start rounding a top and rolling over, there could be some bearish opportunities there uh, on the yields themselves or or the vice versa of that or the opposite of that is uh, doing something bullish on the bond prices themselves with TLT. So perhaps there's there's going to be some opportunities arising right there. Uh, when it comes to the VIX, we were down 5% uh, today. Now the VIX has been kind of stuck in uh, the mud for many, many months at this point. So it's just a reminder that there's not a lot of fear, at least from a professional perspective, in the market at this current juncture, despite all the saber rattling and everything else that's going on around us and all the noise. Of course, CNBC is running all their specials about the 10-year anniversary of the fall of Lehman Brothers, well, this is a different environment. We're, we're now in the longest bull market in history, and uh, traders just don't really see a whole lot on the horizon to be overly fearful about, at least judging through the uh, lens of the VIX itself. As we look at some of these other charts here, one of the other things I mentioned on Tuesday was keep your eye on gold. All of a sudden, it kind of gets, it gives you the sense that gold wants to find a bottom. I mean, it's been a bloodbath in gold for a long time. So they're certainly due for some sort of a rally. Well, we actually might be getting something here. You know, we already had the bullish posture two days ago, but remember at that time, we were trading below a falling moving average. So we just didn't quite know. I said, watch out for this level right here in August. If we can get up and over that, at least we can start making the claim that we can make a higher high at that point. We almost got there today. In fact, we almost went there to the penny. If I right click on that and go to maximize sell, you can kind of see what I'm, I'm, I'm referring to right there. The top of today's candle, the top of that wick right there is right in that top range of where we had some resistance uh, back there at the end of August. So keep your eye on gold because if that is a, a true reversal that's that's potentially gonna take place there, there could be some good meat on that bone. I mean, gold has been blasted here lately. So um, when, a, when, an, when an entire asset goes down as much as gold did, it's entirely possible that whatever reversion to the mean type of a move we see could be outsized compared to most other charts out there. So keep your eye on that. I do like some of the stability that we've been seeing in the gold prices here recently. All right, let's take a peek here now at our next uh, 12 grid. This will be our foreign stock markets 12 grid. And as we're looking at this, um, you'll notice that uh, Brazil was down today, 1.7%. That's been a really ugly area of the world, at least from a um, stock market perspective. It's down about 9% in the last three months, and today touched a new three-month low. But the good news is this. There might be a reason to expect some sort of a bounce here. We did get an oversold cluster signal as of today. You'll notice the last couple of times we got it. So this time we, we got maybe two or three days to the upside there after giving uh, a, an oversold cluster signal there on August 21st. So there was maybe a little bit of a move there, not much. This one was a lot better over here where we had that cluster signal. And remember, you can right click, go to maximize sell to see that in a little bit better detail if you want. But notice on this candle over here where we have this green dot, and again, you can get this by using chart 4F if you've gone through my tutorial. Um, make sure you have all of those lines in the lower reversal zone like we see down here. That gives you what's known as an oversold cluster signal. Now this one did see one more big day to the downside right there, but other than that, you didn't have a whole lot of fear. Uh, in that trade as we had a really nice rally after that. Now, you don't typically expect that type of a move. That was a really aggressive move out of that oversold condition there. But I'm just pointing it out because who knows? Uh, maybe we're about due for some sort of a bounce in EWZ. In fact, I think when I was looking at the dollar a moment ago, UUP, uh, it was down today. And all of a sudden, this dollar is starting to look like it's hanging out below that moving average a little bit more. Remember, if the dollar weakens going forward, 
what we should expect to see is the foreign stock markets perking up just a little bit on a relative basis. So for those of you willing to, to roll the dice a little bit on a speculative trade, uh, I've seen worse trades setups out there than uh, what we see from a long perspective on EWZ right now. Some of the other areas uh, that have been uh, doing a little bit better You'll notice that the best looking chart on the board is down here with Israel. We actually talked about this a week ago from last night in my strategy lab class. We took a trade on, on Israel at that time as we were having that as kind of our, our educational topic and, and discussion point at that point. It was really one of the only major U.S. I'm sorry, uh, non-U.S. markets um, that was still in an uptrend. Most other world markets have really been struggling uh, here since uh, this summer. Um, so keep your eye on that because that there, there's some, there, there seems to be something brewing there uh, with the Israeli stock market. A lot of these others are having some nice bounce backs. So you'll notice that today we did see a 1% move higher in Russia, a 1% move higher in India, a 2% move higher in China, nearly 2% higher in uh, Mexico. Uh, we saw a 1% move in Germany. We saw a 1% move in Israel and a 1% move in South Africa. That's a lot of 1% moves. Remember, if the US stock market were up 1%, you know, they would they'd be popping the champagne and releasing the balloons. Um, that's a big day for an entire country index. And we had a lot of those from a foreign stock market perspective today. And it's not lost on me that the US dollar was weak. So if we do see continued dropping of that US dollar, I would anticipate maybe a little bit of a rotation of money back into some of these foreign stock markets. Keep your eye on that. And then lastly, let's take a peek here at our US sectors 12 grid. And remember, anytime you see the green background colors of these charts, that means that we have a bullish posture using the intermediate term line. If you see any red backgrounds, it means that you have a bearish posture. So as we look at this, we're back to that bullish posture on the S&P 500, which we like to see. In fact, that's a nice looking chart, right? People want to fight the market, want to keep on selling the market, even though the stocks continue to go up. They convince themselves for whatever reason um, that, that stocks don't deserve to be where they are. Well, the truth is they're, they're doing what they need to do. And you, you have a choice. You can either trade what you see or you can trade what you think. Uh, and oftentimes you're better off trading what you see. Right now, what I see is a nice bounce out of the S&P 500. And so I'm going to assume that that trend holds until it doesn't. And that bounce right here where we got it right above that rising moving average is exactly where you want to see it. So unless some news comes out of the blue, uh, I'm going to assume that the S&P 500 will be hitting new all-time highs here reasonably quickly. Um, one area of focus, and we'll talk about that. Actually, let me save that for just a second. I wanted to point out technology as well. Technology was up 1.17% today. Remember, Apple had its big investor day. It wasn't really an investor day. It was a product release day yesterday where they launched their new iPhones and watches and different things like that. Well, that seemed to cause some positive vibrations throughout the tech space. A lot of semiconductor names that have been getting beat up here lately were up nicely today. And so the whole complex, that whole tech complex did very well today. Again, we like to see it when we have a rising trend of higher highs and higher lows. We have a momentary pullback to a rising moving average, and we get a bounce off of that like it's using it as a launch pad. And that's what we saw out of tech today. So that's a good sign. Remember, tech is a very important leadership group of this market. We don't want to lose it. So when we see it up 1% here today like we did, that's a strong sign. We also found that um, it was the healthcare stocks that did very, very well today, up 1.2%. One side note on that, notice we did get an overbought cluster signal on healthcare. That has been by far and away the best performing sector here recently. And so, uh, you know, maybe it's about time for it to kind of stall out a little bit. We'll just have to keep our eye on it. But that was a robust move here of 1.2% on uh, a base that was pretty much already at all time highs. So, really good strength out of your healthcare stocks there. Where we're not seeing so much strength is in the financials. It was one of the only sectors here today that was down along with the staples, but uh, the financials were down 0.14%. And notice that this is starting to look kind of ugly. Notice that we've got a pink background color, which signifies that we do have a bearish posture on XLF itself, the ETF that tracks the financial companies in the S&P 500. But not only that, but we now have price below that moving average. And that hasn't really happened in earnest since back here about three months ago. 
Since then, we've actually had a decent move higher out of the financials, but all of a sudden, things look a little dicey there where it looks like it wants to almost roll over there. So we're gonna kind of tap into that. We don't wanna get overly aggressive with that mindset. Remember, bears have been getting run over in this market for years. And so we don't wanna to get too big for our britches. Uh, we will deploy bearish trades every so often, um, but we've gotta be very, very careful with position sizing and, and different things like that um, when we have markets that are relatively intact. Remember, in the end, this is just education. Sometimes you guys have questions about bearish trades out there, so I figured, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it for once here tonight since we do have at least an excuse to do so with XLF having a bearish posture. So for that, what I wanted to do is now come on over here to chart 4A. And I want to pull up a stock that we actually talked about last night in my strategy lab class, thinking about it as a bearish trade. We didn't vote for it. I kind of wish we would have considering this stock was down over 1%, but we took another trade and that's the way it goes. I still think it has um, some viability as a bearish setup as it stands right now. Notice that Bank of America kind of during the summer months right here actually had a nice little launch higher. We had a lot of that green background color there signifying bullish posture on the market forecast. But after kind of hitting this high of nearly $32 per share, we had this nice pullback to the moving average. It rode it for a while, which is what you wanna see, but it never really used it as that launch pad higher. Instead, it ultimately went sideways, even though the stock market itself went on to hit new all-time highs. So you had relative underperformance of Bank of America versus the S&P 500. Well, that brings us to where we're at now. Um, things certainly got worse. Notice that in the last five sessions, actually the last six sessions, we've had downside action. And we went from having a weekly bearish posture on this candle, I know that because that's where we started getting this light pink background. Remember, that's where that green line started falling right down here to now having this darker pink line or this darker pink background, I should say. And that reminds us that we now have a strongly bearish posture on Bank of America when that green line falls below 50. And you'll notice the last time we had a strongly bearish posture, it lasted for quite a long time. Remember, in this environment where stocks have had more of a tendency to rise than to fall, many of the weak, uh, I'm sorry, the strong bearish postures um, haven't really um, led to anything substantial. And they've been kind of unwound in just a couple of days. So this stock itself has shown a tendency and ability to be beat up a little bit more so than most stocks in the market. And right now, this is looking a little uglier. We're now trading below a falling moving average, which is why that moving average is colored red. We can also make the claim that we have broken support. Notice that the bottom of this candle that I'm pointing at right here on August 15th, the low price that day was $30.16. Well, notice what the close price is right now. It's $30.14. So anyway, we've got a, a, a stock that is closed two cents lower than the prior intraday low where we had a support level. So again, that's not a good sign either because it gives you the impression that any of the buyers that existed on this candle over here have been flushed out of the system. And right now, the bears control this particular stock. So the type of trade setup that I was going to review with you from an educational perspective tonight is known as a long put spread, or some of you might call it a bear pit, uh, put spread. Remember, that's different than a bull put spread. A bear put, uh, put spread would be where we are the buyers of the spread, not the sellers of the spread. And it is a directional trade, and it is a trade where we have to spend money out of our pocket to begin with. So this would be known as a debit spread, as opposed to sometimes when we show you those credit spreads. So just make sure you're aware of what you're hoping to accomplish here. But as I come on over here to the trade tab, I've got the October contracts pulled up. These are the ones with 36 days left until expiration. And typically the way that we set these up is we grab one strike that's in the money, and we sell another one that's out of the money. So. Right now with this stock trading close to $30, the $30 strike would be the at the money strike. So for this setup, I'm going to buy the 31 put and I'm going to sell the 29 put. So in order to do that, I can right click on the 31 put and come on over here to buy vertical. Once that gets pulled up here on the Thinkorswim paper money platform, you will want to change manually this um, uh, 30 put to a 29. So click on it and then scroll up to 29. So we basically have a $2 wide uh, 
spread that we're dealing with here, but we have to pay 88 cents out of our pocket for that. Now remember, if we're right on this, that opens up the possibility of us getting a better than one for one reward risk ratio. The reason I say that is we would technically have the ability to make about a dollar twelve in credit while at the same time only risking 88 cents in debit. Now, the only way we make the full dollar twelve is if this stock does go down. Remember, a lot of times when we're teaching you credit spreads, we always say, you can have a stock go sideways and you'll make money. That's not this trade. This trade is directional. If you want to make money on this trade, you want this stock to fall from $30.14 to down below $29. If that happens, then you get more than a 100% return on the risk that you're taking in that trade. Okay, so uh, it is a, maybe a lower probability trade because you need that directionality, but if you have strong evidence to suggest that either the market itself is going to struggle in the future or a particular stock, then it can perhaps be a trade strategy that you could consider. So uh, with that, let me go ahead and click confirm and send. We'll review this one last time and ship that off to the market. All right, well, I wanna thank you for joining me here tonight. Largely a good day in the stock market. Uh, most indices back on track with bullish posture with the, with the holdout being the Russell 2000 at this point. But remember, just because the market in general has a bullish posture doesn't mean there can't be some weak areas within the market. And right now, one of those weak areas is the financial area. So uh, anyway, keep your eye on that story as it develops. Best of success for those of you on the East Coast, for those of you in the Carolinas. Hope you're hunkering down and uh, you're staying dry uh, with the hurricane heading your way. And uh, I'll be, uh, of course, uh, off tomorrow. So David will be with you, but I'll be back on Tuesday. So I'll look forward to seeing you all then. Have a great rest of the day. Best of success with your trades and your investments. Goodbye for now.